The last principle we need to have a look at is, or the last uh, collection of decisions, uh, to do with the um, coupling principles. Now, these mostly affect um, the, the maintenance effort that goes on. So, looking at them, there are three again. Um, these are because package, um, applications tend to be large networks of things, and we, we want to have sensible kind of networks, so we want things in sensible places. Now, the three uh, principles involved are the acyclic dependencies principle, the uh, stable dependencies principle, and the stable abstractions principle. So we'll go through those uh, piece by piece. So the acyclic dependencies principle is that you will have dependencies between um, modules, classes, libraries, and things like that. You will have dependencies in, in your system. And you do not want uh, dependencies to go around in a circle. Now this, this is just um, maddening. Now, I gather it's worse than that. I've recently uh, watched a video um, given by um, one of the co-founders of guilt.com uh, in, in which he reviewed this uh, phenomenon now uh, known as uh, dependency hell. And there's a Wikipedia entry and it describes it pretty well, so look it up. It's dependency hell. Um, it's largely where you have um, uh, you have a module that depends on um, a library. That library has a version, so you bring it in. Um, that invokes something else, and bring in you know you have uh, components that depend on components depend on on other components. As you modify these things and uh, alter them, um, they bring in the different versions of the different libraries that you you've used at the various times. And this can blow out your um, package size or your module size by a considerable amount. And you can, in, in, in the end, finish up with contradictory dependencies. So um, it's getting to be a big problem. So the acyclic dependency principle is, as I say, where you have things going around in a circle, you have dependencies in a circle, and you want to avoid that. You want the dependencies to be acyclic, not cyclic. Now there is a way of breaking the uh, dependencies, and that is essentially by creating a new package and moving all the dependencies there. So you have a common package and, and the dependencies move into them. Or you can invert the dependencies by inserting an abstraction between them. So the abstraction pr protects, um, breaks the dependency. You don't have the dependency anymore, and each uh, each uh, uh, component has its own dependencies, but doesn't imply any others. Now, the stable dependency principle is is uh, dependencies between things in the same module. Now, something that a whole lot of things depend on will tend to be fairly stable. Uh, that's because um, you know if you change it, then you change all these other things, and nobody wants that amount of work. On the other hand, something that depends on a lot of other things will be affected every time one of those other things changes. So it's going to be unstable. Now, ideally, you really want something to be stable. So you, so you don't have so much work. Now, the question obviously arises is, should all software be stable? Well, no, it doesn't all need to be stable. Um, sometimes you want some software to be unstable, that is, able to be changed easily. That is unstable. Doesn't mean it's going to. It's, it, sorry, unstable does not mean flaky and prone to crashing. It just means that you can change it easily. So uh, this comes up uh, particularly when um, when you're dealing with uh, uh, product line software. You want some some parts there, points of inflection, it's called, where you want to be able to change it quite easily. And even with um, business software you really ought to have a think about what kind of thing is likely to change and therefore where you should put the instabilities. So that's the stable dependency principle. Now the stable abstractions principle is essentially that you can stabilize things by putting an abstraction between things. Okay. Where previously you may have had um, a package that depends on, on something that uh, may well change. 
then without anything between them, between the, the changeable thing and the, the things that are dependent on it, if there's nothing in between them, every time you change that thing, then um, all the things that depend on it will have to change. So you want to be able to change it without the, thing, the, depend, the dependent modules having to change as well. So you put an abstraction between them or any other stable interface that breaks that dependency cycle. Uh, in this case with classes you'd put a, an abstract class between them. Alright, now uh, the, the opinion about that uh, that I'm getting from the industry is that it takes uh, quite a bit of experience to design uh, stable classes. Uh, Gilt, the founder of Guilt.com referred to it as first class um, uh, interfaces and the general principle is very much like uh, classes themselves that any change should be an extension not a modification and now this, this probably could finish up with convoluted kind of interfaces but it works so the summary is then of the package coupling principles there are three of them we have the acyclic dependencies principle we have the stable dependencies principle and the stable abstractions principle